all righty ladies and gentlemen welcome back to another video on the channel today's video is going to be a little different than what i usually do because today is the start of a brand new series random collapse so the idea of this series i'm basically i'm basically doing these random collapse with cool chill folks that have same or similar interests that i do and they have similar morals and mentalities and we just talk about cool and awesome stuff because that's what we do you know how we do it let's go let's get it so yeah so today i'm joined i'm joined with my good friend and today's episode episode one uh interview with a cosplayer uh so basically how this is gonna work i'll be the one asking the questions and then uh, the other person will be answering those questions and, and we'll just be going back and forth, you know, short and swim, sh eh, short and simple. And, uh, you know, we're mean lean fine machine. That's how we do it. So yeah. And, uh, stick around you guys, because we'll be sharing some of that good wisdom and all that good stuff. You never know. You never know. So stick around. So yeah. And, uh, you know, what I'm saying so yeah. And without further ado, let's get right into the video. So today you guys, I'm joined here with my good friend, Visa. Uh, she's a good friend of mine, loves anime, loves cosplaying, and basically just an anime and uh, cosplaying fan. So, uh, uh, Visa, it's an honor to have you here, and uh, yeah, welcome aboard. Thank you. My pleasure, my pleasure. So, like I said, you guys, uh, you know, basically on episode one of this random collabs interview with a cosplayer, like I said, I'll be the one asking the questions and then the other person will be answering those questions and we'll be going back and forth and all that yada stuff, all that spiel, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, this is episode one. I don't know if I'll be doing more uh, episodes of this random collab series with the same person or with different people. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but yeah, one step at a time, you guys, one step at a time. So episode one, let's get to it. All right, here we go, people. Here we go. All right, so Visa, my first question for you. My first question for you, uh, talk about, talk about anime, talk about how did you get into anime? Talk about that whole origin story of anime, how you got into, how you got into anime and just talk about that real quickly. Um, I would say it was around like end of 2015, 2016. Um, I had recently gotten into my FNAF phase, which is by coincidence, I'm still in it over five years. But um, I had been wanting to watch more stuff because I was getting bored. And my very first anime I watched was Sailor Moon. And I knew nothing about it. I did not know what was happening. But I was like, you know what? I'm just going to try this and see if it works. And obviously it did because it's been a thing for like five, four years. So, um, but it wasn't something that I thought I would get into because it wasn't something I was ever interested in. And then over the years, I just found more and more animes to watch and it just got so addictive. And it's just like changed everything for me. And I just go to it for like, just support and comfort and it helps a lot. All right, all right, that's good stuff. Good stuff indeed, good stuff. That's what's up, so yeah. Uh, uh, talk about uh, anime being a role in your life. Like, what what role did uh, anime anime play in your life? When once you got once you got into anime, uh, talk about um, the role it played in your life. Uh, talk about that real quickly. Um, I was just in a really bad place before, and I didn't know what to do about it so I was leaning on things that I shouldn't be leaning on for support trying to help my mental state and then once I found out about anime and cosplay and everything it was just something that I actually enjoyed so all the other things that I could not enjoy anymore I could enjoy again because of anime and because of the stuff I was watching and it brought happiness to me so it's like a big huge role in my life because it changed how I thought about a lot of stuff and it's made me the happiest I've ever been honestly and I've met so many cool people because of it and it's just like it helps you get around a lot and make a lot more friends and yes people can be toxic but there's a lot of good people out there too awesome stuff that's that's what's up that's what's up um and and yeah I to I totally uh agree with you that um AMA has been that great and awesome comfort zone that people can just lean on for support and happiness so i definitely agree with you on that so yeah well said well said 
Um, would you say would you say that you're still an anime fan today t- till till this day t- today? Like, are you still an anime the fan? Oh yeah, definitely. It hasn't stopped. It's just so addictive all the time. I just constantly watch it all the time now. It's so much. Okay, okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. Are you familiar? Um, so a lot of people would use this term in the in the community and just in life and society. Like people would always have an addiction. They have an addiction for this or that. And people, uh, a lot of people would always have a video game addiction. Are you familiar with that? The video game addiction. Oh yeah, my finest of Friday's addiction has not stopped, and it's been six years. <laughs> It's gotcha. gone on for too long, but I can't get out of the fandom because it's just so good. So <laughs> I, I know a lot about video game addiction. I'm I'm like over the top. So the reason why I asked you about video game addiction, because I've been meaning to ask, but I don't think anyone has ever uh, asked. I, I don't think anyone has ever asked this question before. So you got video game addiction and a lot of people will say it's a problem. It's not a problem, yada, yada, yada. But what about anime addiction? Would you say that any like any anime fan, any person that really gets into anime and they love it and they lean on it for that comfort and that support and their happiness and all that stuff, all that spiel, would you say that anime addiction could be a thing? And would you say that more and more people are being addicted to anime um, nowadays in the present time? Uh, Talk, talk a little bit about that. Oh yeah, anime addiction is definitely a real thing. Take it from me, and I know so many people that all they do is watch anime. Like regular TV shows are no longer a thing anymore, but it's always like for a good reason because it helps for like comforting things and like coping mechanisms, and it helps a lot. Um, it's definitely a big thing now because of like quarantine, so people have nothing to do but sit and watch TV nowadays so anime is a big bigger thing now I think and with a lot of like tv shows still releasing episodes of anime and stuff which I think is amazing even during COVID it um becomes more addicting for people that are sitting in their house still because they have nothing else to do but watch anime I mean they could choose to watch other shows but for us that like anime it gets addicting sometimes but it's not a bad thing though especially if you use it like for comfort or like coping I see I see that's what's up that's what's up uh would you say so when it when it comes to anime you obviously you and i can obviously tell that and yes you guys i am an anime fan even though i got a power rangers uh background wallpaper here but that's okay uh so yeah so like when it comes to anime do you think do you think more and more people are getting into it like do you think over the years of anime like do you think it's gotten a huge increase in popularity is it becoming more famous is it becoming i should say more well known do you think over the time over the years that anime is starting to become more well known and do you think it's starting to like rise up in popularity like uh, talk 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 about that um i think definitely over the years with our generation and everything of us younger people i think it's definitely more popular because there's a lot more genres than there were before and it's a lot more like freedom with people that are creating anime now because there's a lot more genres than like say like 2017 um it's it's gotten a lot of it's gotten a lot of hate but it's also got a a lot of people liking it too because i can just go to Walmart and I'll see like My Hero Academia, Dangarampa, all sorts of stuff at my local Walmart. And it's just a small Walmart. So this stuff is like everywhere. And for people to see it, um, I know like a few animes I got into was because I saw shirts for the anime or the game. And I was like, oh, what is this show from? What is this game from? And that's how I gotten into a lot of shows. So it's definitely popular and it's just sprouting everywhere. And I mean, while the whole, while all the fandoms are getting bigger, that also means more toxic people, but there is a way to avoid that, but just everything's getting much bigger and it's, it's a really nice thing to have. That's what's up. That's what's up. Do you think, uh, I actually, I, when I think about it, I never actually heard anybody uh, say this, but just asking this question uh, again, out of curiosity, um, do you think anime could be a very 
revolutionary thing because obviously I haven't seen the experience for myself, but I've seen from my perspective that people love this stuff. They enjoy it. They love it to a degree of a passion. Would you say anime is starting to become this revolutionary idea and it's being pushed forward and it's being um, it's being introduced to more and more uh, new people and uh, talk about that. Like, do you on do you believe that anime truly deep down can be a revolutionary ideal? And if it is, why? Like, talk talk about that. Um, I honestly think it can because, like I said before, there's a lot of freedom with making anime, so it can reach out to like a ton of people. And those people don't even have to like the same thing. Like you could have like a complete like horror addict that just loves horror movies and stuff. And then you can have like a um, superhero girl addict that likes all like the superhero magical girls shows. And you can just take both of them and they can both be watching anime, but it will be two different genres, obviously. But anime is just so, it's just, there's so much freedom with it that it can apply to literally so many people. So it can become... So I think it would be like, I think it is becoming like just a big, huge deal. And like I said, there is going to be hate for it, but it just applies to so many people that it's just spreading out everywhere. So I think it can really be like, I think it is like an idea and it can be, I think it can really be something big. I see, I see. That's what's up. That's what's up. A lot of people will say that, hey, I'm a nerd and I love anime. Do you think because because you you were talking a little bit about this and um if you have anything new to add then by all means but do you think do you honestly think that anime only pertains to the nerds or like like or do you believe that anime is just for anyone could watch it anybody can watch it doesn't matter who you are where you're from you oh, know yeah. just okay all right yeah yeah definitely it literally can apply to almost anybody like I have friends that absolutely hated anime and they hated that I watched it and they were like oh this is so stupid and because of quarantine they actually started watching anime and it was really funny to me because they were like whoa I didn't know they had horror anime and I'm like yeah it doesn't apply to just one type it's not all just magical girl anime out there it's all sorts of different stuff and it's funny because like a lot of people have said like oh i don't like cosplayers i don't like anime but then they end up becoming a cosplayer or anime watcher and i think that's really funny and it shows that there's anime is literally for anybody and anyone any age range any type of listener or watcher it can apply to literally anybody that's what's up that's what's up you see yourself you see yourself in the next like we'll say in the next five years just using this as an example you use you see yourself and not just you, all the other anime fans out there, but you specifically, you see yourself five years, will you see, will uh, will you still be an anime fan then? I think so. I think that since how much it's changed me, I feel like it's not something I would just get rid of within the span of like seven years, I think it would be five years later. Um, it's it's a big change it was a big change for me so I don't think it's something that I could push away that easily and how much I've invested into it time money everything I don't think it's something I could just give away easily like that so I don't think I th- I think I will still be an anime fan within five years definitely and it's just so addicting and there's so many new things coming out. So it's never, I don't think it's ever going to get old. I know a lot of people say, oh, anime is going to get old. It's going to go away soon enough. But in actual reality, a ton of animes are being made all the time. And I don't think it's a thing that's ever going to get old because of how constant the series come and go. Because you could like a fandom and then it could disappear. But then like two years later, you could be in a whole different fandom because everything is just, all the animes are just being made so constantly. It's not something that would just stop happening. That's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah. And I, and I totally uh, agree with you on that because even now, even now during this whole quarant during this whole uh, quarantine experience, new and new animes were being made and they were being released. And it was just, 
it was just mind blowing and it was just, it was awesome and amazing. So yeah, uh, I, I for one agree that anime is never going to stop. And I think people will continue being a fan of this stuff because just, it continues to keep growing and growing. And I, and I love that. And I, I find that really inspiring. So yeah, that's cool. Um, do you think, do you think as generations, generation after generation after generation, do you see this community of anime fans like they love anime yes every anime fan may be different they love this series they love that series they love that fandom that fandom whatnot do you believe that this anime community will continue to grow or do you think that sometime in the future that it's just going to die out people are going to be like anime doesn't matter anymore it's not important it doesn't help me anymore and do you think that this is do you think that this concept is just going to die out or do you think that this community is going to continue to grow and grow and expand more and what what what's your thought process on that talk a little bit about that um so as the generations come and stuff um i don't think anime is going to disappear because as kids get older and then um new kids get born i think through the generations those younger kids are still going to like some of the stuff that we liked like say I'm talking like say like one generation from now I feel like anime is still going to be a thing because um like I said it's just so repetitive that there's going to be new stuff popping out all the time so like there will be constant watchers constantly so I don't think it's going to die out now there are some people that like outgrow the fandoms obviously and outgrow anime sometimes and stuff like that but there's also a lot of people that don't and it's just like a lifelong thing for them sometimes but even if they say like oh well anime is not a coping mechanism for me anymore that's perfectly fine because if you found a different way for it then that's great honestly but there is a ton of people that still use it as a coping mechanism and I think like since since it's going on all the time anime and stuff i don't think it's going to die out as quickly as everybody thinks it will i see i see that's what's up that's what's up do you do you think um do you so do you believe do you believe with more anime with the more do you believe that the more anime that comes that comes out more anime after new anime and more anime after that do you think that still will spike a huge uh resonant energy and popularity and do you think like do you believe that m the more anime shows that come out the more popular pop popularity will grow in the community like what do you think about that i definitely think that as the new shows come out it will gain a lot of popularity within the anime community definitely because there will be a lot more um genres off of and i think just i mean it's definitely going to just raise the popularity a lot because new stuff is coming out but then there's also going to be the old stuff that is still popular so i i think it's i think as new stuff comes out yes it's going to be more popular i see i see that's what's up that's what's up do you think um because one, one of the problems I would always notice back in the day is a lot of bullies and a lot of toxic people, like you mentioned, will hate and they'll just have this deep hatred for these people that just, honestly, they love these fandoms, they love these animes, they want to cosplay, do whatever, and they just want to live in their world, in their universe, and they just want to do what they love and love what they do. Do you think as the years progress on and the more that this community grows and grows and expands more do you think nowadays anime is starting to become more of a normal thing rather than it's like oh it's this nerdy hobby it's this nerdy topic and it's only for the nerds like do you think it's starting to become like anime do you think it's starting to become more uh a, no a more of a normal thing now you know uh t t talk a little bit about that
Hello, you there? Uh, sorry about that, you guys. It looks like we're having... Oh. Are we, are, are we good? No, 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 you're good. You're yeah. good. I was just, uh, you, no, you're spacing, you were spacing out there. So I was like, what, what's going oh, on? Oh no, it kicked me out of the meeting for a second. Oh, that's weird. Zoom, I swear, yeah. to, I, I swear to God. <laughs> anyway, yes. anyway, you guys, no, that's okay. That's okay. The show must go on. So no, we're good. We're good. We're good. Um, but the question I was asking was, um, long story short, do you believe that anime is starting to become more of a normal thing now and do you think as this community grows and expands and more and more people love this stuff to a degree of passion and all that good stuff do you believe that anime is starting to become more uh normalized and it's starting to become more of a normal thing and talk talk a little bit about that yeah um like i was trying to say before zoom kicked me out which is great thanks no, zoom. <laughs> it's all good it's um, all good, all good. <laughs> um because of all the genres that are like all the genres and stuff, nobody can really say it's a nerdy hobby anymore because I feel like the word nerd is, I feel like it doesn't, I feel like it applies to like video games and sometimes anime, but I used to, um, I usually reference the word nerd to video games, sometimes anime, honestly depends, but on that kind of area. Um, and then also TV shows, depending on what you're watching, obviously, but with all the genres like horror and sci-fi and stuff, I mean, sci-fi is technically nerd, I guess, level, but like stuff like horror and stuff, um, that's not really nerdy kind of stuff. So nobody can really say, oh, that's just for nerds or whatever, when it's literally not because um, there are a lot of horror animes out there and it's just something you have to like kind of search for. It's not something that's popular among everybody, but like it's definitely becoming more normal because a lot more people are fighting out about it and it's being spread out more places. I see, I see. That's what's up. That's what's up. Now let's talk about cosplay. So talk about talk about the origin story of how you got into cosplay and just talk talk about that real quick the or the origin of cosplay okay oh god um so it was i think it was in 2018 um i had i think it was 2018 late 2017 like the end of 2017 the beginning of 2018 i had gotten into my hero academia and I was watching my hair academia and I was like, oh, this is a cool show. And I started watching it for like almost a year back then. And I was like, I want to get involved with the community more. I want to do more than just watch the show. And it was around that time that Halloween came around and I had the greatest idea. I said I was going to be Himiko Togo from my hair academia for Halloween. And, and so I went on Amazon. And I was like, oh, let me get a costume and had my mom order it. And I, I obviously wore it to the Halloween event I went to. And I knew nothing about cosplay at the time. I just thought it was just a costume. And I was like, OK, this is cool. And then I started looking at it more and I was like, wait, what is this cosplay thing? And I started seeing so many cosplayers cosplaying not only the same character I was, but also multiple people from the same fandom and I was like oh this is really cool I want to keep doing this and so I was just really happy cosplaying on that Halloween night and it just made my whole entire night when I did it and um I remember I was walking around and like three people recognized me and they were like hey Toga and I was like turning around and I was like oh hi and it was just like such a happy thing for me because I was like oh wow people actually recognize my character I guess I'm not the only one who likes my hair academia here and um it just made me feel really good so I was like how can I just keep doing this and how can I keep this up and then I found out that cons were a thing so I went to my first con at the beginning of 2020 before lockdown started um on February in February 
and it was so nice because I met so many other cosplayers and I actually won a cosplay contest my first cosplay contest for a judge's choice which was really cool for me but it was so nice seeing other cosplayers of the same fandom and then recognizing other cosplayers and just taking pictures and it's just so nice and it's just such a great experience to be able to see other people just like you and be able to talk to them. And obviously lockdown is not necessarily happening anymore, but COVID is still a thing. So cons are slowly coming back, but it's just such a great experience to be in the cosplay community because you meet like a ton of cool people and you just have a lot of fun, I guess. I see. That's cool. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Would you say, uh, because a lot of people will say that, yeah, cosplay, you know, they got into anime, that's how they got into cosplay. But then they also say that cosplay doesn't just pertain to anime, that cosplay can pertain to a lot of other things like Power Rangers, oh, no. Marvel, DC, mm -hmm. all that, all that stuff. But oh, would yeah. you say, oh, yeah. but would you say like you go to a con, you go to a con and you're in a, you're in a cosplay from as an anime character from this one anime series and you just go up to any other cosplayer that's cosplaying from anime because you know, they're cosplaying from anime because you watch the, that series and you're, you're part of that fandom mm -hmm. as well. You come up to them and you ask them, uh, you know, would you say that you got inspired to cosplay because of anime? Like, what, 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 like, what do you think the response is? And what do you think the answer? Is? Like, do you think that's true? Do you think a lot of people that got into cosplay got inspired from anime? Like, t talk a little bit about that. Oh yeah. Um. So I'm pretty sure I th I think just this is based off of my own assumptions, but like. I'm pretty sure that a ton of cosplayers, a lot of the cosplayers in the cosplay community get inspired off of the anime because that's where the characters come from, obviously. And I think, um, I know, I think that's the main reason why people cosplay is so they can become that character. So I think it's pretty much all based off of being inspired from the anime because they're like, oh, I like this character from this show I watch, I'm gonna become them or I'm gonna cosplay them or whatever. And there's a few people that get inspired by other cosplayers. Um, there's a lot, but they still technically have to watch the show to understand the character and see the character. So I think. I see, I see that's, oh, dang it. Sorry, sorry, you guys. Uh, Zoom is uh, act acting up again. God dang it. Yeah, sorry about that, you guys. Just Zoom acting up. Just it's it's all good. It's all good. Should be back. I hope. I hope. Just real quickly, you guys. I I just want to say that I really am enjoying this collab, and I'm really gaining a lot of good wisdom and a lot of good knowledge and a lot of just uh good experience. This I feel like this experience is gonna benefit me uh, later on in the future. The more I talk about anime and cosplay and the more I get to experience this kind of stuff myself. So it's, it's, it's really awesome. And it's very inspiring. I, I'm not going to lie. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, te I'm texting her right now. She said, she said, it'll be back. But uh, yeah, you guys, no worries. All good, all good. We good. Um, so yeah. But uh, but yeah, you guys, just um, you know, just you know, this is like, this is like a quick like, pause intermission, uh, uh, half time here, you know, kind of session here. Uh, yeah, you guys have to understand that anime and cosplay is a is a very big thing, and just um, you know. And just um, yeah, it's it's a it's a very big thing, and it's very lovable, and just a lot of people really uh, love and enjoy this kind of stuff, and it's uh, um, it's it's really awesome. 
it's a really awesome indeed and it's just um yeah it's just really cool and it's really awesome and really inspiring to you guys and i really hope in the future you guys um this video right here uh it was a uh, beta test uh you know it's okay you know no one's perfect uh that's okay um yep yep she's uh she's gonna come back she'll be back All right, there we go. Welcome back. There we go. I'm so sorry. No, no, you're good. All good. All good. No need to apologize. No need to apologize. All good. Um, but just yeah, finish up, finish up that uh, finish up that uh, last part you were saying. Uh, you were saying something about the um, uh, the the cosplay and something like that. But just finish up that oh, yeah. last part. Yeah. Okay. Um, I can't remember what I was going to say, but uh, so I do think a lot of people get inspired from the anime. Um. Like I said, I don't know how long ago it was that I cut out, but I said that um, there are people that get inspired by cosplayers, but they still have to technically watch the anime before they um, decide like they want to cosplay the character. Now, I guess that applies to most people, but I mean, it doesn't have to apply to everybody because you could put somebody in a cosplay and they don't even know what the character is from most of the time, but um I definitely think it's mostly inspired from anime because that's where the characters originally come from. That's cool. That's cool. That's awesome. That's awesome. Do you think, uh, do you honestly uh, think like my, my question is, do you think that there is a lot of inspiration and a motivation to be gained, not just by cosplaying and not just by going to a con, meeting other cosplayers and socializing in that, in that realm, in that community, but also from anime. Do you do you think people can benefit with inspiration and motivation? And do you think there can be inspiration, motivation gains from watching anime and cosplaying and having both of these experiences? To talk talk about that. Um. Yeah, I think so. I think a lot of inspiration comes from watching anime and cosplaying because. Um, a lot of people are in a bad place and cosplaying and watching anime is their go-to for coping. And I think it's it's a really nice thing. And um, a lot of people do get inspired by it because whether the anime has like something that kind of like just strikes your heart from personal experience, um, it just inspires you to sometimes do better. Like it shows you like, hey, I can do better with this. I can do better. I can do better overall. And then you have cosplaying. And when people compliment you or recognize your character, it makes you feel really good. It makes you feel like you've done a good job. Or when you gain followers or people say they like your stuff or any sort of compliment, it just feels so nice and inspires you to do more of what you do. And it's such a great thing. That's what's up. That's what's up. That's awesome. Do you think, uh, do you think that they're, uh, so you got anime and then you got cosplaying. So when people, uh, realize that this is what I want to do, this is what I love. I've got the skills, I've got, you know, the skills and the mindset, here's what I need to do, do it. And once they realize that they cosplay and they want to be a cosplayer and let's say a lot of people, not saying everyone, but a lot of people in the community want to cosplay and this is what they want to do full time forever and ever, you know, would you say that, um, would you say that there is a lot of acceptance and a lot of acknowledgement and a lot of recognition to, to be experienced? And do you think that such an idea, uh, such an ideal is possible in this, in this community and, uh, t t talk about that. Um, I know um, there are a lot of people that are wanting to become full-time professional cosplayers. Um, it's, it's a great goal to have. I have it myself, but you have to dedicate yourself to it. And cosplaying, it's a lot of time spent and a lot of money spent for cosplaying. So it's something that you kind of have to dedicate yourself to and not give up on. Um, 
it's something that can grow on you a lot and then it can also damage you a lot when you feel like you're not going to be able to succeed and you can't do it anymore um especially with a lot of dream crushers out there that say you can't do it that's technically not true because you can do anything as long as you work hard towards it so as long as you have the motivation to do it and the dedication I think it's definitely a thing that somebody can do even with not a lot of money you can still you can still do it um it's just the motivation you have to have I guess but it is it's a hard thing to accomplish but once you do it I'll guarantee you're just gonna feel so good about it so that's that's what's up that's what's up the more um the more a cosplayer gets accepted and recognized and acknowledged that they did an awesome job on their on their cosplay and then you got other people coming up to that person saying that oh she's awesome he's awesome and you just got all these good vibes and just all this good support and all this respect back and forth back and forth um would you say that that type of acknowledgement and that kind of uh, recognition and acceptance do you think that needs to be uh that needs to happen more in both of these communities and would you say that more and more people need to uh, experience that, you know? Um, I definitely think so, because when you get compliments like that on something you worked really hard on, it just feels really good. And without that, like those people there telling you that, you have close to no reason for, like, I guess I wouldn't say doing it at all because people shouldn't be telling you what you should and shouldn't be doing. But without that little spark of motivation that's there from people saying, oh, you did a good job. I want to see more of that. It kind of makes you feel like nobody's enjoying your stuff. But I feel like if you're enjoying it, that's the only thing that's important. And even if you don't get a ton of views on TikTok or a ton of followers on Instagram, as long as you're happy doing it, that's the most important thing. But I think a lot of people need to be more recognized for what they do, especially a lot of these underrated cosplayers that spend a lot of time and work and money into doing this and they get no recognition whatsoever. Or even worse, they get their stuff reposted without their permission and then other people take credit for their work. And um, I think it's just a nice thing to have somebody there saying, oh, you're doing a good job. I like what you're doing. Even if it's simple as family or parental figures, I think it's still a really nice thing to have. Um, it's just so nice to have somebody there saying that you're doing a good job because it kind of pushes you to move forward more within both of those communities, honestly. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. It's definitely good uh, encouragement and it's definitely a, uh, a good push in the right direction. Some good inspiration, motivation right there. Well said, well said. I agree, I agree. You got a, a cosplayer, so let's say he or she, um, they decide to do cosplay, and this isn't their first rodeo. They've done cosplay before, but this time is different. Before, they would do cosplay for the glory and for the fun of it, but this time, he or she is like think to themselves, you know what, I'm just going to cosplay. I'm just going to go to this convention and have fun, but then people are getting mad at that person because you probably know, know know this all too well and a lot of other people that are in this community know this all too well you got the photographers you got the people with the phones the cameras all that stuff all that yada 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 and they'll ask you can i take a picture of your awesome cosplay but that person says no and they didn't come to that con so they can be taking pictures of you know they just want to socialize have a good time Mm -hmm. and just have a chill relaxing time you know uh talk about talk about your thought process on that and would you say that something like that is a bad thing if that person keeps denying the fact that oh I don't want to be taking pictures of I don't want any selfies like oh no talk no. about your okay yeah no 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 um if somebody asks you to not take a picture of them do not take a picture of them because if they don't want that, then they don't want that. There's a lot of people that don't have social media and they cosplay for the fun of it. They don't want you taking pictures of them and then posting it around social media, especially if you do it without their permission. Um, even if you do take a picture of somebody and they say that they don't want you to post it anywhere, you should have enough respect for them to not post it. And it just, 
damages a lot of people. Um, now, just like uh, taking photos is the same thing as cosplay is not consent. It's still in the same um, category. Um, just like if you would ask to take a picture with somebody, you should do the same for asking if you can touch their stuff, whether that's putting your arm over their shoulder for a picture or holding their prop. You should never touch anybody, whether it's just a simple pat on the arm or touching them because they could have they could have any sort of thing where they don't want you to touch them or it triggers them in some way and you don't want that at all. So you should always ask before doing anything. Um, obviously, you would ask, bef you, you wouldn't ask before you talk to a cosplayer. You wouldn't say, can I talk to you? Because obviously you're already talking to them. But when it goes, when it comes with touching them, holding their props, touching their wig, taking photos with them, it's always... You always have to have consent from them first. Um, there's a lot of people that will take pictures of you from behind, your underskirt pictures, and that's totally not okay because that is without consent and that is just wrong. And um, you should just always ask permission no matter what you're doing, even if it's just simple. Can I have a handshake? You should still ask. You should never touch somebody, grab their hand because you don't know what triggers they might have. Um, it's it's always consent. You always have to have consent with that. And if you don't, then that's completely wrong. Like you shouldn't be doing that. That's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah. Respect is always, I, I, yeah, I always say, I always like to say that respect is key and respect is number one priority. Exactly. Cause you don't know if this person is going to be triggered by that or that the least you can do is ask them nicely and say, Hey, I think your cosplay is really awesome. Would you mind if I take a picture with you? And if they say no, yeah, then you just accept and go about your way. Mm -hmm. Um, but I also, I also just want to point out that, you know, there will be a lot of people that are very accepting and they're very open to the idea, but not everyone is going to be as open. Not everyone is going to be like, Oh, I open my heart out to you and you like, no, they're, there are limits and there are boundaries for a reason. And if you can't accept that, and if you can't respect that, I honestly would say that you shouldn't even go to the con in the first place because people came to, people came to have a great time. And uh, this is actually leading to my next question on um, escape. A lot of people will say on the internet and a lot of people that will say that, oh, anime and cosplay changed my life and it saved my life. And it does more good than harm to me would you say that anime and cosplay is that perfect escape like talk about anime first and then talk about cosplay and just talk about how the two intertwine with each other and just talk about that okay so with anime i can definitely say if you're the type of person that likes anime you may not be you may be um either way it's for me and for a lot of people within the anime community it's it's a great escape from just um, whether it's your household or your friends or something that's just really bothering you, it's a great escape. It's just a great way to get out of that confined space that you're in and kind of move to somewhere just more open. And it kind of just like gives you, like I said, like a coping mechanism and it gives you like just so much comfort. So it's definitely like an escape. Technically, I guess it would be just an escape from reality because it's all fictional, but um, uh, it's definitely... It's definitely an escape though, because it just, it just helps so much and it helps to just escape from whatever's happening in your life, no matter how small or big it is, it's still, it's just helps you cope with all the outside stuff, I guess. Um, and then with cosplay, it's also another way to escape because not only now are you watching your favorite characters on screen, you can also become them yourself. And a lot of people that are like me have a lot of comfort characters. And a lot of my cosplays are a ton of comfort characters. Now there are a few that I just cosplay because I like their character design or I'm working on it. Um, but cosplaying your comfort characters, it's, it's such a great thing because it's kind of like almost like you're one with them now. So it's like, it's like they're right there next to you and it just feels so nice. And cosplay is just kind of like another, it's just another gateway into the fictional world where you can be whatever you want to be, whether 
you're a gender bend, whether you're the actual character, whether you're just an elf version, no matter what, it doesn't matter because there's just so much freedom with it. And there's a lot of accepting people out there. While there are not, um, while there are some people that aren't as accepting, there is a lot of accepting people. Um, so it's also just a great way to just get out of your reality that you have right now and just escape into a whole nother one. Um, and then when the, where those two intertwine is, um, especially if you're cosplaying from, an, when you're cosplaying from an anime you watch and then you're cosplaying your comfort character on top of that, it just, um, it's like a double, it's a double escape now. So it's like, I've escaped once, but if something tries to pull me back, I'll just escape back again. Um, that's kind of how it is for me, honestly, because I can watch anime, I can like it, and it's just kind of like a way for me to just forget about everything that's happened recently or whatever happens in my life in general. And then I cosplay and it just helps me just kind of like surround myself in just a whole nother world. And it just makes you feel so good. And along with people complimenting you and helping you on the way, it just feels so nice. That's what's up, that's what's up. You mentioned uh, comfort characters now. Uh, one of the problems that I would see uh, back a day is that there are a lot of characters from anime and not, not even just anime, um, mostly anime, but, you know, it doesn't just have to be anime, but just characters in general, like maybe he or she is not comfortable cosplaying as this person or that person. Like, talk about just what do you think the mind, what do you think that the kind of mindset people need to have? when it comes to comfort characters, like you cosplay as this character. And if you feel comfortable cosplaying as that character, there's no fuss, no muss. You follow your passion, follow your heart, end of story. Like what, what's, what's, what do you think the, the mindset uh, on that should be? Like to talk about that. Um, I think when somebody's planning to cosplay a comfort character, the first thing in their mind is like, this is a great character. They bring me so much comfort. I want to, um almost like technically like become them so I can feel happier because it feels like they're closer to me than they ever were before um so I think somebody uh I think just the general person that has a comfort character just chooses I guess chooses a comfort character I, I have a lot of them and some people have one or two some people have like 20 or almost 50 depending on how many shows you watch honestly um but when you, I guess the mindset is kind of, I'm cosplaying a character. I really like, they bring me comfort. It feels like they're comforting me even more than they were before. And it's just kind of like, almost like you're in the same reality as them now. So it's like closer than ever, I guess. I see, I see, that's what's up. Talk about uh, peer pressure. Cause I truly believe just like anywhere else that, uh, society and just life can be very judgmental and i believe with a lot of that judge ju judgments that there's a lot of peer pressure and uh you know you'll have a lot of people in the community saying that oh you should have worn this shirt and oh you should have cosplayed like this or that and just like talk about the best way uh the best coping mechanism to just cope with that when it comes to peer pressure um because i for one can just say that I truly believe no one, anybody deserves that peer pressure in general. Like you love this, you love it with a passion. That's really all that matters. But uh, talk, talk about, uh, t talk about your thought process and just how the best way to really cope with peer pressure in, in this community. Um, I would say just kind of just ignore what everybody else says because you're doing your own thing if they can't respect that they they can, then they can just get out they can just get out of your page they can get off of your instagram tiktok twitter whatever they can just go away because if they don't like the stuff you're posting then why are they there in the first place honestly um with coping with it it helps a lot to talk to somebody about it especially somebody that has dealt with the same stuff that you have um because it helps to relate to experiences a lot um venting is great um and blocking people is an option <laughs> uh 
um, not always the option you want to take, especially if it's somebody you talk to a lot and then they're saying, oh, you shouldn't be cosplaying that character. Um, I just say don't listen to what anybody else says because they're not in control of who or what you cosplay because they're they're not you. They're not a lot of the people that are online. They're not your parents. They're not your family. They're they're just people on the Internet that are wanting to bully you for absolutely no reason because they have nothing else better to do. Um, a lot of cosplayers get attacked all the time and it's not a great thing, but it's what happens. Um, especially as the communities are getting bigger, there are more people coming in and harassing cosplayers and bullying them. And it's not, it's not nice at all, but I would say not to listen to what anybody else says, because it doesn't matter. Um, you're cosplaying who you want. It was your idea to start with. Um, deleting comments is a thing. Blocking people is a thing venting is a thing um telling somebody not to say that again is a thing and then just not listening whatsoever is also an option you may lose followers or you may lose subscribers or you may lose views because you're keeping what you want but at least you're doing what you want and that's what matters because you could have 10,000 people following you they could tell you to change or you could lose like a thousand but it doesn't matter because Yes, a lot of people are like, oh, I need to get these views up, but it the views don't really count if you're not doing what you want on your platform, because it's just, um, it's very hard for a lot of cosplayers because they get a lot of requests from people doing certain, for doing certain characters or doing certain things with cosplay and they don't want to do them and people threaten to unfollow them or block them and that's a lot of pressure on somebody, especially um, cosplayers that are really addicted to their platforms. I'm not saying it's every cosplayer, but I can say for a fact, speaking from experience, it's sad when you lose a few followers, but you'll gain them back eventually. Sometimes you'll even gain more than you lost. Um, so I just say, do what you want because cosplay has so much freedom to it. So it gives you the freedom to do whatever you want. So it doesn't matter what anybody else says because if they want you to do something. They can just go do it themselves. They can earn the money. They can do the work. They can put all the work in all the time and money spent that you did and they can change it however they want. You don't have to. If they want you to change something, they can just do it themselves, honestly. Um, but like I said, don't listen to what anybody else says. Um, I mean, yes, sometimes it's different. If it's somebody that's close to you, it hurts a little bit sometimes but you just kind of got to get through it venting really helps talking about it really helps it helps you get all your emotions out kind of and it just i guess it just helps a lot i see i see that's so well said well said um so you know you and i both know this that there are a lot of people out there that feel really left out really lonely and they they're not experiencing that oh i'm being accepted and i'm being acknowledged i'm being recognized they're not experiencing that and they feel more lonely more left out they're not able to fit in dealing with very deep and serious depression would you say uh as an anime fan and as a cosplayer would you say that the best solution for that person to bring them out of a very dark place is to watch anime and go to a con and just experience that uh livelihood where you feel alive you feel all this good power and all this good energy and so many people are supporting so many people are accepting because you said it yourself there are toxic people within the community and there's always going to be toxic people within the fandom but the majority of people are really loving and accepting and really nice really nice and kind and caring and very supportive um would you say that the best solution for those people that are really in a dark place and they've been in a really dark place most of their lives would you say that going to a con and just experiencing all that life and energy um would you say that is the key um to just being happy and all that uh, talk, talk a little bit about that um, it's a great thing to go and do, but you might not necessarily be comfortable with it, especially depending on what kind of con you go to. And it might not even be your kind of thing. You may be somebody who likes sitting at home cosplaying, making TikToks, making any sort of videos, and you're not comfortable with going to a con. Um, while a lot of cons are big with sometimes over 100 people, sometimes you have cons that are local, which is like 
be like 50 to 70 people um, at the max. Um, I think if you're somebody with like social anxiety and you don't want to go to one, you shouldn't pressure yourself to go to one because it's not going to be good for your health. And I would say just probably wait until you find a smaller one because it's best to start at the smaller ones and then go on to the bigger ones. Um, my first con that I went to was a very small con. I don't remember how many people there were, but there were not even 70, I don't think. So it was just a kind of small con. Um, if you're going for your first time, I wouldn't recommend going somewhere with like over 200 people because it's a lot of pressure for you. And that's the chance of a lot more toxic people coming up to you and a lot of people taking uh, pictures without your permission because it's most often in those bigger places because there's so many people that you can't that you can't even tell if somebody's taking a picture of you or not most of the time. Um, so I would say just do what you're comfortable doing. Um, I'm not gonna say cons will make you absolutely happy because you could be going to a con, not talk to anybody and you could just be so lonely the whole time. So it's not necessarily something that will definitely make you happy, but if you're interested in doing that kind of stuff and you're, um, I wouldn't say you have to be outgoing because a lot of people can come up to you. Like when I went to my first con, I was just so nervous, even though it was like a small little con, but people came up to me and I soon enough got warmed up to that kind of stuff, but people coming up and asking for my picture and everything. But if it's not something you're comfortable with, I don't recommend going because you don't want to pressure yourself to go. You don't want to pressure yourself and say, hey, I'm going to push past all this and force myself to go. It may make me feel bad later for my mental health, but I'm still going to go because it's a possibility that it might make me happy. That it uh, might make me happy. Um, if you have major social anxiety, I would think about going. If you don't want to, don't pressure yourself to. It's really great to go with friends because they're there for you. And it's nice because if you feel like you have nobody to talk to, you brought a friend or along. You brought a friend along so you can talk to them. Um, it's I would definitely recommend going with people. Um, obviously, there's a lot of younger cosplayers that aren't able to drive yet and they want to go to cons. So parents driving or parents taking you to cons is always a great thing but you might not necessarily want your parent next to you the whole entire time while you're at a con trying to be your character. Um, so I definitely recommend bringing friends along because it's just great and it's a great experience for you to all have fun. And sometimes cons will have discounts where you can have like five people go in and it's cheaper than just paying for like three people. Um, but I definitely recommend just going to cons if you're comfortable with it. If you're not, you'll be ready soon enough, but you just, if you want to wait it out, you can, but I'm not guaranteeing that cons are always going to be the best thing, especially if they're huge for your first time. I see. I see. That's so, and I just also want to add, I also want to add real quickly that you guys have to understand that with anime and cosplay, because everyone wants to have beef with each other and they want to be toxic and negative and so hateful for no reason. Ladies and gentlemen, you have to understand in all reality, uh, it's a choice, you know, it's a choice. Anime and cosplay going to these cons is, is a choice, you know, it's a choice. And if you want to watch anime, watch anime. If you want to cosplay, you cosplay. If you want to go to a con and watch anime at the same time, then go for it. It's all a choice. There's no peer pressure. No one's going to peer pressure you. And if people are going to peer pressure you, then it's, you know, it's like you said, you know, just, you know, block them out um, and just, you know, ignore them and move on. Um, that's really all any of us can do. So, uh, yeah. Um, so, yeah. But good stuff, though. Good stuff, indeed. All right, you guys. Well, that's going to be a good uh, wrap up for uh, this video right here. Um, again, you guys, I don't know if I'll be doing more collab videos uh, like this in the future. I really hope so because I, for one, was able to learn a lot and I, for one, definitely was able to gain a lot of good wisdom, a lot of good knowledge. So, uh, Visa, thank you for hopping aboard. Uh, thank you uh, for being thank here. Thank you for having me. Awesome. No problem. No problem. My pleasure. My pleasure. And who knows, you guys, I might do the same uh uh, collab, uh, collab uh, episode uh, two with Visa again. You might see a uh, Visa again. Um, you know, and um, yeah, go follow, go follow Visa on Instagram. I'll put a link in the description box below and in the comment section below. Really uh, awesome cosplayer. Uh, go check out her cosplays. Really awesome stuff. Thumbs up to that. So yeah, and uh, yeah, you guys. You know, we'll. we'll 
I guess uh, I guess we'll see. Um, and us, I guess. Hey, I'm sorry, we'll see you guys in the next episode of either random thoughts or random collabs. I don't know, but uh, we'll keep going. We'll keep going. So yeah, all right, you guys. See you guys next time. You have an awesome day. Stay awesome. May the power protect you all. And uh, until next time, peace out.